G4's holiday hit list, where we're counting down the best games that every gamer should have on their wish list this holiday season. Hey, I'm Greg Grunberg. Now, no matter what your favorite kind of game is, chances are, at one time or another, you have played a speed game. Whether it's flying vintage airplanes or racing rocket cars of the future, there is no shortage of top-notch speed titles to get you in the mood to move. Ferraris, Porsches, and Beavers, oh my! It, one of the Xbox's most popular games starts its second lap with Project Gotham Racing 2. Gotham 2 is the big racing game for Xbox this winter, and it's going up against Sega GT. I think what Gotham has going for it are super high production values. Project Gotham 2 is... Uh, a great showpiece for Xbox Live. It allows uh, for head-to-head -head play um, over Xbox Live, as well as ghost cars, where you can race against your friend's best times, even if they're not online, against a ghost car, which you know pretty much races the lap that they raced the first time around. You can even play it offline, and if somebody wants to play you online, they can message you while you're playing offline, and you'll get a little challenge. And you can you know quit your game, get online, hit your friends list and you know, find the guy who messaged you and play him online. It looks really good and you know you pick it up and, you're, and it, it just controls well. It's got this cool system that Project Gotham 1 had called the Kudo system where just making a turn well you get more or less points depending on how well you do it. So again it's not all about just the finish line. <laughs> This next game originally appeared on the Super NES back in 1991, and now, a dozen years later, it returns to the GameCube in the form of F-Zero GX, where the futuristic racing in this game can only be described as insane. But most importantly, Shigeru Miyamoto, the man behind Mario, lent his expertise in this game design, and even cooler is the fact that with a memory card, you can save your customized racing machine to go up against other people in the arcade version. Okay, let's forget about the mean streets and head for the friendly skies, or the not-so-friendly skies in the case of Secret Weapons over Normandy. Inspired by LucasArts' 1991 release, Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe, this time you'll again climb into the cockpit of an authentic World War II plane and engage in intense dogfighting combat. You can fly everything from a P-38 Lightning to the B-17 Flying Fortress as you do your best not to change the course of history. Imagine, if you will, that you are at the controls of a plane equipped with detonator cannons and remote control rockets. Now, imagine that you're flying that plane as a barnstormer in the 1930s, and you've got the premise behind Crimson Skies' High Road to Revenge. Crimson Skies will be remembered as the first Xbox flight sim. Microsoft took their time with this one. It was originally supposed to come out last year, and they were, you know, the graphics weren't quite there, so they revamped the title, added Xbox Live Play, and it's finally coming out now. It's more of an action game, but really sort of gets across that feeling of, of flight and motion really well. On the single player side, they're, you know, they're doing some interesting things, but it's pretty much, you know, just a shoot em up, like you're kind of going through stories. A man should never mix his jam theme with vocal. When it comes to multiplayer, there's going to be a ton of stuff you can do on Xbox Live, and, uh, you know, basically everyone likes to dogfight, and it's, the controls are really easy, and anybody can get into it. Um, it looks pretty great. It's kind of this weird alternate reality World War II setting. Uh, the Xbox Live should be a big hit on it. And if people can get into the unique stories, you know, it's not for everybody, but I think, I think people will dig it. The classic arcade game Spy Hunter made its way to the next generation consoles in 2002 with a 3D sensory overload. It Hot on the heels of the wrestler turned thespian Rock's announcement that he'll be playing the lead in the Spy Hunter movie comes Spy Hunter 2 from Angel Studios, the company behind Midnight Club Street Racing. This combat racer puts you behind the wheel of the G8155 Interceptor, a top secret vehicle that can transform into an off road transport, a motorcycle, and a snow ski. But I can't wait to see that movie. Now, speaking of movies, Need for Speed Underground takes its cues from The Fast and the Furious and introduces players to the world of underground street racing. You'll get behind the wheel of your favorite import with the ability to customize your ride to your own specifications and take it to the streets. And if you can prove that you've got what it takes to own the asphalt, you can take the action online and challenge some poor chump and leave his Mitsubishi chugging exhaust to the line. Okay, if there is one speed game that you have got to have this holiday season, 
You better have a GameCube, baby, because Mario Kart Double Dash is a GameCube exclusive that allows you to team up with a friend for some two-man karting. It's also the must-have speed game this season. Mario Kart Double Dash is so much fun. I mean, we've been playing it, and it just, just, you pick it up, from the moment you pick it up, like, this is just another kart game, but it's not. For some reason, they just, they added so much to it. The kart racing genre, um, has never been better than uh, when Mario is behind the wheel, and this is the best of the three Mario Kart games. Mario Kart Double Dash is really a big jump over its uh, predecessors because uh, first it's the first Mario Kart game on the GameCube, so the graphics look great, and also you have actually the tag team uh, t gameplay. So instead of just having your one driver, one car, and you're racing around, you actually think about what kind of players you're going to play and the car you're going to drive, and it actually adds a lot of strategy because each character has different powers, which really adds a lot of variety to the old gameplay. Anybody can pick it up and play. That's one favorite thing about Mario You can pick it up and play at the same time you can invest the amount of time into it. You can add so much different elements to the power slides, to finding the, you know, the hidden paths. You can actually hook it up. You can hook up GameCubes and have up to 16 players playing simultaneously on it. I think it's going to be... Like, you know, a landmark title that everyone's going to play. It's not just for kids. I mean, if anybody picks up this game, it's addictive, it's amazing, it's just perfectly fun. I mean, that's what Nintendo does. They just make these amazingly fun, polished games, and Double Dash is probably the best GameCube game yet. I love it. I gave it a 10. Yeah, Mario Kart Double Dash is a nearly flawless game. Okay, so you got your consoles, you got your games, and you've called in sick for work. Very good, but, uh, what's missing? What's missing? Oh! Hey, how about high-end audio and video equipment to take your gaming to the next level? Hi, my name is Philip. I'm here at Magnolia Audio Video. And I'm here to show you the ultimate gaming experience. In terms of video, we're going to first look at DLP. Uh, it's a newer technology. It's digital light processing. It allows you to get a very nice large size but at the same time gives you the capability of having a very sharp picture. There's no burn-in on DLP, so you can play video games for as long as you want. They start as low as 43 inches and then go as large as 61 inches. They start at about $3,500 and go as high as about $5,000. Here we have the Pioneer Elite surround sound receivers as well as the Denons. Um, you get into 6.1 and 7.1 surround sound. Uh, it gives you flexibility also to do multi-zone capability. So if you're doing a gaming experience, you can actually be playing your video game and surround sound inside the front room. At the same time, you can be playing some speakers out in the backyard. In the mid to high end level, uh, price ranges usually start at about $1,000 and go as high as about four to $5,000. Now to actually optimize your system, you actually also want to get into better quality cables. Uh, for video game systems, you can do an up in picture quality and audio quality by going to the new Monster Game Packs. We have that available for Xbox or PS2. Now we've actually integrated everything into the Ultimate system. Um, we have our Martin Logan electrostatic speakers here, our Sony 999ES DVD player for rest of scan, and then we have our Krell Showcase system, which is a preamp and amplifier separate. And then to top it all off, we have our nice little Xbox system hooked up uh, via high def with component video cables and also with uh, our fiber optic cable for 5.1 surround sound. For our video, we have a nice Stewart Firehawk 92 inch fixed screen. Uh, the ultimate gaming system I just described right now will retail for a, a little over $30,000 for a full complete system. Um, even though you can get stuff for a lot cheaper, um, this definitely is worth it if you want to get the full home theater experience as well as the ultimate gaming experience. Whoa, whoa, we gotta slow things down a little bit, take a break.